Welcome back everybody to a new Unity tutorial. Recently, I've been playing lots of Paper Mario on the N64, and I really like this 2.5D effect. So, let's have a go at creating a character and movement in that same Paper Mario style 2.5D. So, when you're ready, put your arts and craft hat on, let's crack on. So, let's talk character setup. My character here is a simple 2D sprite, and attached to him is a capsule collider. I've also added a rigid body. For the rigid body constraints, I have frozen the rotation on the X and the Z axis. Eventually, we'll create a flip effect like that in Paper Mario by changing the angle on the Y axis. My character also has some simple animations, which I will show you later, so I also have an animator component as well. At the feet of the character, I created an empty child game object called Ground Checker, which I've placed just at the bottom there. We are gonna use this to cast a ray cast to decide whether or not our character has his feet firmly on the ground to help control things like jumping. So when your character is set up, go ahead, create a player controller script, add it to the character and open it up. Okay, let's just review our movement script. We need a public float move speed and a vector two of move input. For jumping, we will apply a public float jump force and a serialized ball jump input. For the ray cast, we want an origin position and that will be a public transform the ground checker which will be the object at the base of the character. The ray cast is going to be looking for objects on the ground layer, which we will assign shortly. And we'll use a layer mask for that, a public layer mask, which we will call ground. We also want to give the ray cast a length. So let's add a public float ray length. And once again, I have a serialized ball for grounded. This is what will help us to determine whether or not we can jump. I'm using a rigid body to move my character, so I've added the rigid body as well. In the start method, let's get the rigid body component like so. The RB equals get component rigid body. And in the update, let's set up our movement. So moving left and right will be move input dot X equals input dot get axis on the horizontal. And moving forward and backwards in our 3D space will be the move input dot Y equals input dot get axis vertical. There we go, that's movement sorted. As for the jump, I have an if statement here. If jump input dot get key down in the brackets, I've chosen Kiko space, you can choose whatever you like, and grounded, then jump input equals true. Now, I'm using physics to move this character. It's generally good practice to apply all physics in the fixed update. So for my movement, I will apply a velocity. The rigid body dot velocity equals a new vector three on the X axis. That'll be our move input dot X multiplied by move speed. We don't want to affect the Y axis. So the rigid body dot velocity dot Y will remain the same. And we want to move on the Z axis via our move input dot Y multiplied by move speed. Next is the ray cast. We'll start with ray cast hit hit followed by an if statement. If physics.raycast, inside the brackets, the origin position of the ray, that'll be our ground checker.position. We want a direction for it. That'll be a vector3.down. Out hit, feeding back what it's hitting, the ray length, and the layer mass that it's looking for. When the raycast is hitting a ground object, then grounded equals true. Otherwise, grounded equals false. To help visualize this in the engine, we have a debug dot draw ray. And once again, from the ground checker dot position, this time a vector two dot down color red. For jumping, I've created a void jump method where I'll apply that jump force by the velocity. So the rigid body dot velocity equals a new vector three, zero F on the X, jump force on the Y and zero F on the Z. Once we have jumped, 
we want jump input to equal false. Then back in fixed update, if jump input is true, then jump. There we go. That's everything we need for movement. Let's hit save and head back into Unity. Back in Unity, the first thing we want to do is make sure we have objects on a ground layer. In my environment here, I'll select my ground object, go to the layer, hit the drop down, and I will add a layer that I will call ground. Once you've done that, let's go back to the player and let's set it up in the inspector. For move speed, I'll add three. For jump force, I will go with five. It's asking for a ground checker transform. So drag our ground checker object in there like so. For the ground layer, it's currently assigned to nothing. We want it to be that ground layer we just created. And the ray length, let's keep it short. Something along the lines of 0.3. There we go. Hit save and have a little test. And we can now run around our 3D scene, forward and backwards, back to front. And you can see that we're currently grounded. So hit space or whatever your jump button is assigned. And we can now jump in the air like so. And you can see that ray cast in the scene view there. Excellent. Okay, let's bring this guy to life with some animations. For my animations, all I have is a simple idle animation, a simple jumping animation, and a walk animation. I have the same again for when we're moving back towards the horizon, idle back, jump back, and a walk back. How we're going to transition between these animations will be in the animator tab using parameters. I've already set up my parameters here to create your own parameters, hit the plus, and you can choose the variable you like, a float, int, bool, or trigger. I have a float for my move speed and two balls, one for when our back is turned and for when we are grounded. I'll go ahead and show you an example of how I've set this up in the animation hierarchy here. Upon entering the scene, we will default to our idle state. From idle, when we're moving, we want to transition to our walk animation. To do that, right click, make a transition and drag it to your desired animation and you'll have a line like this. Select your transition line. I have deselect has exit time and deselected fixed duration and punched in a transition duration of zero for quick snappy transitions. Then you can hit the plus and add your parameter, your condition and select what you'd like from the drop down. I've chosen move speed is greater than 0.1 then transition to walk. To revert back to idle, the same again, but the opposite. Move speed is less than 0.1. For walking back, here the transition will be back turned is true. And likewise, to revert back to walk from walking back, back turned is false. Let's have a look at walk back to idle back. Move speed and back turned. So if move speed is less than 0.1, back turned is true, then idle back and the opposite for walking back, back turn is true, and the move speed is greater than 0.1. And you can probably hazard a guess how we transition from idle back to idle, back turned, simple as that. Now, you may have noticed jump has no transition. Let's go ahead and do that together. We want to be able to jump from any state. So right click any state, make transition to jump. Click on the transition, Make sure there is no exit time, no fixed duration, and hit zero. Then let's add our condition. We want two conditions here. First, when we're jumping, we're no longer grounded, so grounded is false. And this will be our normal jump. We want back turned equals false. Then right click any state, make transition to jump back, and it'll be the opposite. So go ahead and do the necessaries deselect and hit a zero transition duration to again, grounded is false, back turned is true. To revert back to the idle states, we simply want to say that we're grounded. So make a transition from jump to jump back. Once again, do the necessaries, deselect, deselect, hit zero, condition, just the one, grounded, true. And do the same 
put the opposite for idle back. Zero grounded is true. There we go. Hit save. Let's head back into the player controller script and apply these parameters to our inputs. Okay, back in player controller script, let's add two more variables. As we're dealing with animation, underneath the rigid body, let's get a reference to the animator, animator the anim. Then let's copy and paste our serialized field for grounded. Just pop that underneath, and this will be our bool for back turned. So go ahead and create that like so. Now we have the three variables we need to influence those parameters, our move speed, grounded, and back turned. Of course, in the start method, let's grab that animator component, the anim equals get component, the animator. Next, let's punch in our parameters for the animations. For movement, let's go underneath our move input and let's punch in the anim.setFloat, that float parameter we set had the name move speed. It's important the spelling matches that which you put. And that will be the equivalent of the rigid body.velocity. However, as we're moving in a 3D space along two different axes, even three different axes if we're jumping, we only want to get the speed. We're not concerned about the values on each respective axis. Therefore, we will add dot magnitude just to get the speed value. If our speed is greater than zero, then we're moving. If it's less than a certain value, we're not moving. Then create a couple of spaces and let's punch in our next parameter, the anim.setBool back turned, and that will be the equivalent of the back turned bool. Now, how are we going to determine whether our back is turned? To do that, let's above just punch in some if statements. And we'll start off by saying if in the brackets our back turned is false and our move input dot y is greater than zero, therefore we're moving to the background, then back turned equals true. Else, if our back is turned and our move input dot y is less than zero, so we're walking closer to the camera, then our back turned equals false. And that just leaves one more parameter for jump. So let's go ahead and set that beneath our jump input. The anim.setBool grounded will equal the bool grounded. Okay, go ahead, hit save, and let's give that a play test. Have a run around in your scene, and you can now see that our player character is animated. Let's check out the back animation, that looks fine. Let's check out jump, that looks good. Let's check out jump back. And there we go. Next, let's put the cherry on top and apply that Paper Mario rotating flip. Let's head back into the player controller script. To create the flip effect, what we're going to do is rotate the character along the Y axis. We need a few variables beforehand. So let's punch in a public bool flipped to determine whether we have or haven't flipped and a public float of flip speed. The flipped ball is going to help determine which direction we want the flip to happen. If we're moving to the right and we suddenly go left, we want to rotate the object 180 degrees left. Then when we're moving left and going right again, we want to rotate back to the default orientation. And to do that, we're going to use quaternions. Let's set two quaternions, flip left and flip right. Quaternion flip left equals quaternion dot Euler, meaning the angle of the rotation. And on the Y axis, we'll punch in minus 180 degrees. And of course, we don't want to affect the X or the Z. If this is your first time encountering the word quaternion, it basically refers to rotation. Then, We'll do the opposite. So by default, our Euler angle will be zero, zero, zero. And that's what we want to rotate back to when we're flipping and moving back to the right as our character is facing right by default. And that'll be the quaternion flip right equals quaternion dot Euler zero, zero, zero. There we go. 
We can now use these in our update method. And let's place this underneath our anim set float move speed. Let's punch in an if statement that's going to determine whether we have or haven't flipped. If we haven't flipped and move input dot x is less than zero, then flipped is true. Else, if we have flipped, meaning we're moving to the left, and we suddenly decide we want to move to the right, and move input dot x is greater than zero, then flipped is false. Okay, now we've determined whether flipped is true or false. What's going to happen? Well, if flipped is true, like we mentioned before, we want to rotate the character so he's facing left. If flipped is false, he's going to rotate back to the right, his default orientation. So underneath, let's apply two more if statements. If we're flipped, then the transform dot rotation of the player will equal quaternion dot slurp. We're going to smoothly interpolate between two rotational values, that being the current transform dot rotation of the object. And our target rotation is the quaternion flip left by the flip speed multiplied by time dot delta time. Else, if we're not flipped, we'll do the same again. The transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot slurp, the current transform dot rotation, the quaternion flip right by the flip speed multiplied by time dot delta time. Okay, let's hit save. Let's head back into Unity. Once everything has compiled, let's go ahead and add a flip speed in the inspector. Nothing too fast. I think a value of 10 will be okay. Then let's go ahead and check it out. So have a run around in your scene. When you change direction, as you can see, we have a pretty cool rotating flip effect. And I think it adds a nice little touch to the Paper Mario 2.5D style. Thank you all very much for joining me today and for checking out our tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please let us know in the comments or over on any of our socials on X, Instagram or Facebook. Thank you all very much for your continued support and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.